If you haven't done so yet, make sure you pause the video and try to answer the question first on your own before listening on. One of the background equations that we will need to solve this question is knowing that the charge on a capacitor is equal to its capacitance multiplied by the potential difference across its plates. Also, if we divide both sides of this equation by C, we can solve for the potential difference, and this will also be a useful equation. Now for part A to calculate the capacitance on C1, all we have to do is recognize that this capacitor is in parallel with the battery that's marked V here. Now because the capacitor is in parallel, that means that the potential difference across its plates will be the same as the potential difference supplied by the battery, which is stated to be 10 volts. We know the capacitance on that capacitor is 10 microfarads because that is the value on all of the capacitors. So we could use this first equation here to calculate the charge on capacitor 1, simply by taking its capacitance and multiplying by the potential difference across its plates. So we plug in 10 microfarads and then 10 volts. We work that out to get 100, and the unit here will be microcoulombs since we used microfarads for the capacitance. So this is the correct answer to part A. For part B, in order to solve for the charge on capacitor 2, what we need to do first is combine the capacitor marked C2 with the unmarked capacitor right here. Now these two capacitors are in series with one another. To calculate the equivalent capacitance of a series arrangements, we simply add together their reciprocals, the reciprocal of their capacitance, I should say, and then solve for the equivalent capacitance. So for example, if we plug in the value of C2, which is 10 microfarads, and the value of the other capacitance, which is also 10 microfarads, we can see that 1 over the equivalent capacitance is equal to 2 over 10. And if we invert both sides of this equation, we would see that the equivalent capacitance is equal to 10 over 2, which of course is 5 microfarads. So what we'll do is combine these two capacitors into a single capacitor whose capacitance is 5 microfarads. We will next note that the 5 microfarad capacitor is in parallel with this capacitor right here, whose capacitance, of course, is 10 microfarads, as stated in the question. When capacitors are in parallel to find their equivalent capacitance, we simply add the individual capacitances. So we'll add these together to make 15 microfarads, and we will redraw the circuit with those two capacitors combined into a single capacitor. So it looks something like this, and this capacitance again would be 15 microfarads. Over here is 10 microfarads. We'll do one more step, maybe come down here, and we'll note that these two capacitors are in series, so we'll use the reciprocal equation to calculate their equivalent capacitance. We would have 1 over 10 plus 1 over 15. You can add those two values together on your calculator to get 1 over 6, and then if you invert both sides, you can see that their equivalent capacitance is equal to 6 microfarads. So let's redraw the circuit with those two capacitors combined into this equivalent capacitance. Now that we have simplified the circuit into one that contains just a single capacitor, we can calculate the total charge in that circuit by using that equation there. So we simply take the potential difference, excuse me, we simply take the capacitance, which is 6 microfarads, and multiply by the potential difference supplied by the battery, which is 10 volts. We work that out and we get 60 microcoulombs. So that would be the charge on this equivalent capacitor right here. And now we start to move backwards through the circuit. Now we're going to move backwards from this capacitor to the two that it came from. So it would be those two right there. Notice that those two capacitors are in series with one another, as noted earlier. And whenever you move backwards from an equivalent capacitor to two or more that are in series, you bring with you the charge. So that means that the charge on those two capacitors will also be 60 microcoulombs. Very important. We can calculate the potential difference across each of these capacitors by using the second equation here. We simply divide the charge by the capacitance. So 60 microcoulombs divided by 10 microfarads is 6 volts, and then 60 microcoulombs divided by 15 microfarads is 4 volts. We next continue to move our way backwards through the circuit. This time we're moving from this capacitor back to the two that it came from, so that would be these two right here. This time we're moving backwards to a parallel arrangement. And when you move backwards to parallel, make sure that you bring the volts, or the potential difference, not the charge. So we're going to bring back the 4 volts and place it on that capacitor, as well as this capacitor right here. We could then calculate the charge on each of those two capacitors going back to the first equation. So if we multiply 5 microfarads by 4 volts, we get 20 microcoulombs. And then over here, we can multiply 
10 microfarads by 4 volts to get 40 microcoulombs. Finally, we're going to move backwards from this capacitor to the two that it came from, which would have been C2 and this capacitor right here. Since we're moving backwards to a series arrangement, we will bring with us the charge. So the charge on this capacitor was 20 microcoulombs. That means that the charge on this capacitor is 20 microcoulombs and is indeed the correct answer to part B.